In today's tutorial, I guide you through the process of utilizing Power Automate to effortlessly generate monthly snapshots of an existing Power BI report. The best part, no coding required, just a few clicks within the user interface of the tools we've been using. This method is incredibly handy for validating the accuracy of historical data, especially when the data comes from external sources beyond your department or organization. In this tutorial, I will rely on leveraging the run a query against the dataset feature within Power Automate. By doing so, we will create and store files in a SharePoint folder. These files will play an important role in the next video, where I demo how to create a dynamic data validator Power BI report. And I reckon it's a genius solution to a data-related challenge I encountered recently. So without further ado, let's start with the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. A few months ago, my team encountered an interesting scenario involving some third-party data. What we uncovered was that although we regularly received weekly data for the past eight weeks, the historical data points were subject to potential changes, changes that could occur without any notification from the third-party source. This was a big shock to us, especially given the data provider has never mentioned anything like this before. After confirming this information with the data provider, it was obvious that we needed a robust solution, one that could automatically address this data dilemma. Fortunately, back in early 2022, Microsoft introduced the Run a Query Against the Dataset feature within Power Automate. However, prior to this issue, I haven't had a chance or need to use it. If you want to dive deeper, I'll include the link to the official announcement in the video description below. This announcement proved to be super useful in our situation. In an upcoming video, I'll be digging into the reporting aspect as well. However, for now, the focus remains solely on addressing the data-related challenge. The entire process and data flow can be summarized as follows. We begin by receiving data from third-party providers. This data is then imported into Power BI report. Here's where the magic happens. Regular snapshots of this data are generated, in today's example, monthly. These snapshots are later used in a separate Power BI report where we create a comparative analysis of different versions to pinpoint any changes that have occurred. Regardless of the scale of these changes, we have the flexibility to establish rules for flagging them. With that said, let's head over to my PC and take a closer look at the details of the problem. As I previously mentioned, our work as analysts often revolves around the data we have, rather than the ideal data we wish to have. This idea is particularly obvious when it comes to third-party data. What you see on the screen right now are four distinct files covering monthly sales acquired via some data provider. To make this demo easier to follow, I streamlined the data size. The time frame spans a month, simulating year-to-date data acquisition on a monthly basis, and is limited to just three states in Australia. However, it's worth noting that this method works even if you're dealing with more granular data, be it weekly, daily, or even larger data size. Within the dataset, each file shows sales figures for specific months. For instance, January 5 contains January sales. The February 5 contains data for both January and February. For the initial three months, the historical sales figures remain consistent. However, the April file introduces two changes. The first one is for January sales in Victoria, but the second one is for March sales in Queensland. This means that my report needs to reflect those new figures. Easy peasy, right? That's where I create a query to only pick up the latest file from our third-party data provider. If you are curious how to do that, I have a video explaining that you can find it here. But here comes the million dollar question. How do you capture snapshots of each month's data without saving files repeatedly? Moreover, imagine working with a larger data set listing numerous fields. How can we potentially distill this into an aggregated table? This is where Power Automate enters the scene. Through the creation of an automation, we will simplify these processes. Our automation's trigger will be the click of a button within Power BI. Once this button is clicked, the real magic begins. I want the flow to run a query against the dataset. However, please note that this isn't our regular DEX query. But fear not, 
as I promised, you won't need to grind this query yourself. Instead, let's head back to Power BI, open the Performance Analyzer, and hit Refresh. Once this step is done, click on the Copy Query button. Now we can return to Power Automate and paste this text to the Query Text section. In the Query Text, you might have noticed terms like Define, Evaluate, and a few others additional components that could be unfamiliar to you. No need to worry, you can explore these bits and pieces later if you want to. Without values coming from the query readily available, the next step involves creating a file from these data points. Generating a CSP file is the simplest approach. Reason behind that is Power Automate's built-in feature designed for this purpose. Lastly, we want to save the generated file to the cloud. We have two options for this task creating a create file on SharePoint action or opting for the save file to OneDrive route. While I often rely on the latter in my tutorials, today let's switch things up a bit by selecting SharePoint. At this point, be prepared for an important piece of advice, one that will greatly help us at the end of this process, file naming convention. It should follow the ISO date format. This involves extracting the UTC time from the moment the button was clicked and formatting this timestamp into a year-month configuration, expressed as YYYYMM. The idea behind this step will be obvious in a minute. Power Automate's internal tests indicate that all of these features are ready to go. With that, let's head back to Power BI, add the button, and generate those snapshots. Given that this process is a bit repetitive, I speed up the video here. However, the process remains unchanged for all files. Pick up new file, trigger a report refresh, publish the report, and trigger the flow. Essentially, I'm just mimicking monthly data acquisition and report refreshes. In this demo, all file names would be 202308.csv as I'm recording this tutorial in August 2023. For the purpose of this tutorial, I manually renamed these files to reflect the valid year-month combination. Great stuff! All monthly data snapshots are now ready to roll and they are stored in a SharePoint folder online. As I mentioned in the intro, in the next tutorial, I'll explain how I use these multiple versions to craft a robust report, one that was engineered to track and monitor changes within historical data. But before we leave, let's have a sneak peek of what to expect from that video. Alrighty, so you might ask why we have to go through all this hassle when we could just simply use the latest version of the year-to-date report. Or in my case, why not just streamline the process by employing Power Query to update the most recent 8 weeks worth of data? Well, first of all, great questions. Imagine a scenario where these figures hold significant weight, influencing either monthly or quarterly commission payouts, or linked to your pivotal C-level dashboard. In both instances, among countless others, ensuring the integrity of historical data is critical. It's not just about modifying past figures in isolation, it's about transparently communicating these changes to stakeholders and decision makers. Imagine if they have already made choices based on previous data. By altering historical data without proper disclosure, we risk undermining the reasons for their decision. Even seemingly minor changes, say a few thousand dollars of sales, could mean that the team reached their target or just missed it, and there could be very significant implications for such a thing. To sum it up, this is a proactive approach that enables clear communication about the data and any potential changes to it. As I mentioned earlier, the upcoming video will dive into the second phase of this process, namely report changes utilizing the snapshots we've created. Once the video is posted, I'll add the links to the comments below and to the top right corner as well. Until then, make sure to ask your questions and share your experience with the Run a Query Against the Dataset feature in Power Automate and how you utilize that to enhance a Power BI report. As you stay till the end, I'm sure you like this video, so please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to watch more of my tutorials, like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.